I've done quite a number of gaming chair videos over the last year, so it's no wonder Mavix reached out to me to send me one of their M9 chairs to review. Now, rest assured that even though they did send me this chair, Mavix has absolutely no say-so in the content of this video, so you'll be getting my raw, unbiased, brutally honest opinion of this chair. So let's not waste any more time and check out the Mavix M9 gaming chair. Stay tuned at the end of this video for the full unboxing and assembly. At around $1,000 for the base chair, which doesn't include the LMAX or 4D armrest add-ons, which add another $300 to the total, I'm really expecting a premium experience for the money. So let's talk everything headrest to wheels to see if this chair is right for you and what I ultimately think of the M9. Starting with the adjustable head and neck support, I've got no complaints in terms of comfort, I can rest my head back when I need to, and find it has just the right amount of bounce to keep it from feeling stiff. This is where you'll find the word Mavix stitched into what Mavix calls their M-Breeze fabric, which is held together by a layer of mesh, which can be seen from behind the chair. It can be tilted upward and downward from the seated position and can also slide up and down to match your head and neck height. However, sliding it up and down is near impossible to do from the seated position as the headrest requires quite a bit of force to get it to move and will require you to stand up to move it, then sit back down to test it. Once you've got it set, you're good to go, but it may take a few tries. We then move down to the backrest, which is comprised of two parts, the upper back portion made of more embreeze material, and a lumbar support section made of tight, stitched together nylon mesh. The backrest is height adjustable, but again, kind of awkward to do so from the seated position, so you may have to adjust it while standing behind the chair. It's got four locking positions, and once you hit the top notch, the backrest will slide back down to the lowest position. Once again, great once it's set, but you'll have to adjust it a few times to find the most comfortable position. Now I'm 5'6", so for me the second setting sits right at the arch of my back, so just experiment till you find what works for you. The lumbar section, which Mavix claims features their advanced tensile recovery fabric, is unique from other chairs as there are no knobs here to adjust lumbar support. Instead, the dynamic variable lumbar will automatically adjust to your back based on how much force you apply to this section, and I must say it works rather well. Add in the LMAX add-on and you get dual fans to keep you cool, or go the opposite route and choose to warm up your back instead while having multiple vibration settings to give yourself a low back massage. I've tested the warmer which applies moderate heat, the cooler which does a good job at dispersing fresh air, and the massager which is pretty much on par with most vibration massaging chairs. Overall, a nice add-on for the extra $130. It also comes with a charger to recharge the battery. The next part of the chair is the absolute most important part of a chair, at least to me, because I've sat in gaming chairs before that felt like sitting on bricks and destroyed my glutes. That's right, I'm talking about the seat. Once again, we'll find the Embreeze fabric here, but underneath that is a cooling gel that feels fantastic and lets out a big hiss sound from the air inside when you first sit on or get off the chair. You can really feel the gel mold to your behind, and after a few weeks using this as my daily, I have yet to feel any kind of soreness. In fact, after using my Titan Evo for the last nine months, I was beginning to feel some soreness when I would sometimes get out of the chair, right in the center of the cheek, most likely where that piriformis muscle is, so this has been a sigh of relief, and I'm going to let myself adjust to it more, and then switch back to the Titan to see if that pain returns. The seat can slide forward and back. I have it set to the outermost position. However, the one adjustment I would have liked to have seen is the ability to tilt the seat base so that the edge under my knees could sit a little higher and offer more support. While my eyes tell me the seat is evened out, it sometimes feels like I'm slowly sliding forward due to the Embreeze material. 
Underneath the seat, we'll find four levers. On the left, we have a rotating knob, which will lock or unlock the ability to recline freely so you can recline to a level you're comfortable with, then lock it in at that setting and a lever to slide the seat forward and back. On the right, once again, we have a rotating knob that increases or decreases the tension in your recline. Now, I suggest tightening it up so you don't accidentally recline too fast and cause that roller coaster effect in your belly, thinking you're going to fall over. The other lever is your standard height adjustment lever. To the sides of the seat, we have this metal bar that extends out, which is where you connect your armrests to, and I kind of wish they had put a little more focus on the bar, as it isn't the most prettiest thing visually. It may not matter to most, I just feel like for the price, I can afford to be a little nitpicky. Connected to that bar, I have the optional 4D armrest, which can completely rotate to crazy positions I haven't seen in a chair before, and once you find that sweet spot, can be locked in at the push of this button. If you're a bigger person, I think this will be helpful as you can set them to a wider position than most chairs and lock them in. Or you can just keep them at this setting to feel like you're in the captain's chair on the Starship Enterprise. Once locked in, you can slide them forward and back and even rotate them a full 360 degrees until you find that perfect setting. The downside here is that you can't then lock it in again and I often find them moving around too much even when I don't want them to. There are also tabs on the outside of the armrest to adjust their height. Now, I didn't get the standard armrests that come with the chair, so I unfortunately can't comment on those. However, I might reach back out to Mavix to see if I can get them to try. Before we get to the wheels, I do want to comment on the star wheel base, as I was a little disappointed to see it come with a plastic wheel base instead of an aluminum or metal one. Again, this may not be a big deal to some, but I just feel like a metal base would have given the chair a more heavy duty feel to its overall plasticky construction and for the thousand dollar price tag would have helped to justify the expense. And while I don't think you'll have any balance issues with the recline, it's just nice to have a more weighted base to feel more secure when doing so. Last but not least, we reach the lockable rollerblade style wheels, and aesthetically, I really dig having white wheels, which help match the white chair and my white acoustic panels adding to the vibe. But there is a con, and it's one you'll get used to, but I found for the first few days I stubbed my toes and even hit my Achilles heel up against the wheel locks, which stick out, and let me tell you, it'll have you yelling out some profanity. It's only happened about three times, but even once is enough, and I really don't see the point of lockable wheels in an office chair unless you lived on a cracked foundation and your house is tilted. All that aside, after using the Titan Evo for almost a year now, there were times when my butt would feel a little sore after getting up from the chair, and the one place where this chair shines is its seat. I'm not exactly sure what the Embreeze material is made of, but the cool gel memory foam inside is an absolute winner. And the more I sit in this chair, the more I adjust to it and find myself liking it even more. Will it beat out my Titan Evo as my permanent daily chair? Well, you'll have to stay tuned for that, but for now, I'm happy Mavic sent me this chair because the more I use it, the more I love it. So, for a thousand dollars, can I recommend it? It's kind of tough for me to give a definite yes or a definite no. On one side, you've got secret lab chairs with all their popularity for half the price, and while there are tons of raving reviews for it, you'll also find a good deal of people who are unhappy with it and find it too hard. On the other end, if money isn't an issue and you're looking for a great hybrid gaming slash office chair or just a high-end chair in general, well, companies like Herman Miller have raised their prices, so even the great Logitech Embody that was once $1,500 is now $1,800, so in that respect, I think this is a great value. $1,000 can be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of you, so if that's the case and you want aesthetics, then maybe a $500 gaming chair is right for you. If you're looking for comfort, then perhaps head to your local Office Depot type store, try out a bunch of chairs until you find one you like, you'll no doubt spend more than a few hundred dollars. If you have a $1,000 budget and you don't want to stretch it to one5 grand or even close to two, and still want a premium chair, then I think the Mavix M9 could be right for you. Chairs are a totally subjective thing. What I find comfortable might be a disaster for you, but so far, now that I'm adjusting to it, I'm digging it, and the cooling gel seat definitely sets itself apart from any other chair I've tried to date.
I hope this has been helpful, and if you're looking into this chair, it has provided some extra insight for you. If so, help support my small channel by hitting subscribe and giving this video a thumbs up. I've definitely got more gaming chair related videos on the way, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time. Now have yourself a great rest of your day. And now I present the full unboxing and assembly. The first thing I noticed upon delivery is how beat up the box is, and I'm hoping that once I've got everything out of the box, there are no damaged or missing items. Once opened, I must say this really isn't packaged as neatly as other, more affordable gaming chairs I've received, and everything feels like it was just kind of thrown together. Now this could be the result of whatever the box has gone through during shipping, but it feels like it's all intact. Once removed, you should have your headrest, along with the star wheel base and a box containing the five rollerblade style wheels. Then the backrest, the armrest, the piston, and your seat. It's really not a whole lot of parts, so it should be easy to put together. You'll also have your tools and screws needed for assembly, the LMX charger and guide, and 4D armrest guide if you ordered those add-ons. One thing to note is you'll have to go online for assembly instructions. The first thing you'll do is pop on the rollerblade style wheels into the star wheel base. Then flip it over to insert the piston. We'll then take the seat and align the hole in the center of this assembly, inserting the piston and the wheel base like so. Go ahead and flip the chair over and we're ready to attach the backrest. It's as easy as sliding this metal shaft into the corresponding space at the rear of the seat. You'll then take these three bolts and tighten them into the corresponding holes, making sure you line them up one by one. It's really pretty easy. You'll then attach the armrest to the metal arm sticking out of each side using two bolts per side. Again, a very simple process. Simply tighten and you're all set. Be sure the height adjustment levers on the armrest are facing the outer position. Finally, using two bolts, you'll attach the headrest to the backrest and then apply the sticky cover to hide the bolts. That's got to be one of the easiest assemblies I've ever done. Your Mavix M9 is now fully assembled. Simply adjust to your body and enjoy using the chair.